My name is Suzanne Johnson and I'm a gynaecologist from Southampton. This is a presentation about the International Ovarian Tumour Analysis Group and the Ovarian Ed Nexel Reporting and Data System. This presentation will cover IOTA terminology, easy descriptors, simple rules, ADNEX, the ORAD system and plenty of examples. Predicting the risk of malignancy in adnexal masses is very important. We can diagnose ovarian cancer earlier and enable such women with a malignancy to have surgery in a dedicated oncology centre. We can triage women with benign pathology to benign gynaecology service where they may have conservative management or minimally invasive surgery. How we phrase the report really matters, whether the adnexal lesion is benign or malignant. Previously, uh, reports would state a simple cyst or a complex cyst, but the example here are all complex cysts. It means absolutely nothing. Can we do better? Can we describe something that's either normal or functional, benign or borderline invasive or metastatic to the ovary? First, we need to standardise terminology, and the IOTA group published this 20 years ago, Terms and Definitions of Adnexal Pathology. This was all done on transvaginal ultrasound, and this is the paper, and it's well worth reading. In the terminology, we we'll describe an adnexal lesion as to how many locules there are, and if there's a solid component, what the cyst contents look like, if there are any papillations, what the vascularity is like, presence of shadowing and ascites. So locularity, if something has one locule, it's unilocular. If there's also some solid material, it's now unilocular solid, or you can call it unilocular with solid. If there's more than one locule, it's multilocular. If there's also a solid component, it's multilocular solid or multilocular with solid. And if more than 80% of the mass is solid, it's called solid. The cyst contents can be anechoic or have some low level echogenicity, ground glass, hemorrhagic or mixed. It's important to understand about solid material and papillations. A solid component is a structure that has the echogenicity suggestive of tissue. That's very important. The white ball of a dermoid is not tissue, so it's not solid. That's the white ball, the Rocky Tansky nodule of a dermoid. And also blood clot or mucin is not solid tissue. Here's an example of a clot and here you can see that it also wobbles. So you just have to go with that the white ball of a dermoid and blood clot or mucin are not solid. So solid is a structure that it has the echogenicity suggestive of tissue. Now a papillary projection is a protrusion more than three millimeters in height from the cyst wall and at this point it's a solid component and it's also a papillation if it protrudes into the cyst if it has fluid on three sides. If it's less than three millimeters in height it counts as an irregularity. So here we've got a papillation and on the right it's just an irregularity. Irregular also means an irregular internal wall and or an irregular outer contour of a solid lesion. This mass is irregular as it has an irregular outer contour and also the cystic components inside are irregular. They've got little sharp edges so they are irregular. So solid material and papillations again. This is a papillation. It's more than three millimetres in height. It um, juts into the cyst wall and it has fluid on three sides. This solid material, however, does not indent the cyst wall. It's solid, but it's not a papillation. So all papillations are solid, but not all solid material is a papillation. The vascularity score is uh, very useful. It's subjective, but it works. You use color Doppler on a PRF of 0.3 to 0.6 kilohertz. That's equivalent to a velocity scale of three to six centimeters per second on some other machines. You need to adjust the Doppler gain to just below the artefact level. And then having chosen your mass and you're looking for flow, if you can't find any flow, none at all, even if you go down to 0.3, that's a score of one. If you really have to look for the color, it's a score of two. If you turn the color on and it's just there, that's a three. And if you find strong flow in one area or throughout the mass, it's a four. 
So this is an example of a, a 1. You can see the colour box and there is no evidence of any colour at a PRF of 0.3, a more sensitive setting. But here I was at 0.6 and you can see just a hint of colour at the edge. That's a 2. This one I turned it on and it was just there. That's a 3. And this mass had irregular, uh, strong colour and that's a 4. The presence of shadowing is very important. It's artifact, but we active, actively have to look for it. And you can see that the shadowing can be very noticeable behind a mass, some dense shadowing, or it can be much more subtle, as in here, just some little bit of fine shadowing behind here. So do look for this because you need it for the algorithms. Ascites is defined as fluid outside of the pouch of Douglas, so it's above the level of the uterine fundus. So let's start having done the language, let's next do easy descriptors. Easy descriptors is pattern recognition and about half of all adnexal masses are instantly recognisable. For instance, in premenopausal women, a physiological cyst like a hemorrhagic cyst, a dermoid, an endometrioma or a simple cyst or cyst adenoma, you will know those immediately. Um, a malignant tumour with ascites in a postmenopausal woman, that's a malignant easy descriptor. Again, you will not need any help with that. So that's 50% of all the adnexal masses done in one go. So let's just look at those in a little bit of detail. This is easy descriptor one. It's a unilocular mass with, with regular walls less than 10 centimetres in size in a premenopausal woman. And in this case, this is a hemorrhagic cyst. I'm just saying a little bit more about hemorrhagic cysts. This patient uh, had bilateral hemorrhagic cysts and they were kissing ovaries as well. She did have endometriosis as well. And here you can see um, on the left hand side an older hemorrhagic cyst where you can see that the fibrin and the serous fluid have separated. And then on the right you can see this is a corpus luteum. This is a, a much newer hemorrhagic cyst um, with the ring of fire. You can prove that it's uh, ovulatory because she had luteal phase endometrium and a little bit of free fluid in the pouch of Douglas. And this is what uh, these two hemorrhagic cysts look like. So the one on the left is older and the one on the right is a hemorrhagic corpus luteum. This girl had just ovulated and came in with severe pelvic pain. And when you press very gently, you can see that clot wobbles. And that's a typical feature of hemorrhagic cysts when they've got some clot inside them. Like this one had a much bigger clot and that also wobbled with some very gentle pressure of the transvaginal probe. Again, look for early luteal phase endometrium and in other cases look for a corpus luteum as a, a collapsed crenellated mass with a strong ring of fire and vascularity on colour Doppler. Be very careful though in postmenopausal women to diagnose a hemorrhagic cyst um, because they shouldn't have a hemorrhagic cyst. And in this example, this woman was postmenopausal with a large multilocular solid ovarian cyst, and in that area was a hemorrhagic component, and you can see that the clot wobbles. And this is quite a common presentation for people with ovarian malignancy. Uh, they have a tendency to hemorrhage into the cyst, and pain would then be a late presenting symptom. Back to the easy descriptors. This is a different easy descriptor. So this is a unilocular cyst with mixed echoes shadowing in a premenopausal woman of less than 10 centimetres. And you'll know this instantly as being a dermoid. And the real giveaway here is the other, the lines. If you look for the lines, um, that's hair. And you only see that in a dermoid. Another easy descriptor is of a unilocular cyst with ground glass echogenicity less than 10 centimetres in a premenopausal woman. And um, this, of course, is an endometrioma. Another easy descriptor is a unilocular cyst, anechoic contents, regular walls less than 10 centimetres. Uh, and this is a simple cyst or a serous cyst adenoma. So those were the four easy descriptors, the benign ones. And then the fifth is a malignant descriptor. If you have a postmenopausal woman with a, a solid mass, a lesion with at least moderate blood flow and ascites, it's going to be malignant. Other things that you can look for in women with a malignancy is look in the pouch of Douglas, uh, look for peritoneal disease, as in this example you can see that there are extensive peritoneal metastases from this tumour here. If you angle your probe backwards a little bit, and if you look with a TA probe in the epigastrium, you can see here that this is a mental cake floating in the ascites. 
But when there's not ascites and it's not so obvious, you can still look in the epigastrium, ask the patient to take a breath, and that will draw your eye to what's omentum. And then you might see a dark, irregular hypoechoic lesion with minor vascularity usually, and that would be an omental metastasis. So these are important things to look for um, if you're looking at a malignancy. So that's half of the masses are described by easy descriptors. But if they don't apply, then you can apply simple rules. Simple rules was published by the IOTA group in 2008, and they're very good. There are some five benign features and five malignant features. Let's go over those. So the first benign feature is a unilocular cyst. So no solid component, because then it would be unilocular solid or unilocular with solid. A unilocular cyst of less than 10 centimetres is a benign feature. Shadowing is a benign feature, and again you can see shadowing behind that same dermoid just there. A cyst that is smooth and multilocular, no solid component, less than 10 centimetres, is a benign feature. A solid component, which is very small, less than 7 millimetres, uh, is a benign feature and no vascularity with a PRF of 0.3 is a benign feature. And the rule is, is that the mass or the lesion is benign if there are one or more benign features and no malignant features. So what do the malignant features look like? Again, five malignant features, an irregular solid lesion. So the lesion has to be at least 80% solid um, and it's irregular because it has an irregular outer contour and irregular internal cystic spaces. Another feature is the presence of at least four papillary structures. structures. So a little solid uh, material, more than three millimeters in height, indenting the cyst, fluid on three sides, at least four of those is a malignant feature. A mass that's irregular, multilocular, solid, and more than 10 centimeters is an irregular feature is a malignant feature. The presence of ascites is a malignant feature and the presence of very strong blood flow. So this would be at a PRF of 0.6 and I've taken a video at the same time and you can see that the, the colour is quite variable throughout the, the mass but it's very strong in areas. So the simple rule is that the lesion is malignant if you have one or more malignant features in the absence of benign features. So the simple rules, it's malignant if you have one or more malignant features and no benign. It's benign if you have one or more benign features and no malignant features. And it's inconclusive if you have both benign and malignant or no benign or malignant features. And the easiest thing to do is to type that up and hang it on, uh, on your station where you're doing your reporting. And you've got the benign features and the malignant features and you can tick them as you go and you'll instantly see whether on simple rules it's benign or malignant. Remember, it has to be less than 10 centimetres. The reason is, is that using the TV probe, the sound waves don't do very well beyond 10 centimetres. Your resolution will be poor. And let's say you think something is unilocular, but at, let's say, 12 centimetres, there's a solid component that you cannot see. Um, then you would call it unilocular, but it isn't. It's unilocular with solid and that would change everything. So you can find uh, all these uh, systems on the IOTA website or on more later, iotagroup.org. And you can put this on your phone, simple rules on your phone, or you can hang up a poster about it uh, or, or do all, all, all three. So some examples of simple rules. Here we've got a nine centimeter multilocular cyst with no solid component. It has some mixed echogenicity. There's some are more echogenic than other in the locules, minor vascularity and no shadowing. So easy descriptors do not apply. That was not one of the five easy descriptors. So let's go to simple rules. It's a smooth multilocular cyst of less than 10 centimeters and there are no malignant features. So it's simple rule says it's benign. And this was a mucinous cyst adenoma. Another example of simple rules is this lesion, which is irregular and solid. It has strong vascularity, no shadowing and no ascites. So again, easy descriptors don't apply. If it was a postmenopausal woman and there was ascites, it would apply, but there's no ascites. So the iota features 
um, there are no benign features. There's one malignant feature of irregular solid, so and there's very strong blood flow. So on simple rules, this would be malignant, and this was a metastasis from a bowel primary to the ovary. Another example of simple rules is this mass here. It's a multilocular solid cyst or multilocular with solid because you've got two locules, so it's uh, multilocular. There's low level echogenicity. This is a papillation. It's solid material, um, which is more than three millimeters in height. This one's 23, so it's, it's solid and it's a papillation because it indents the cyst wall. It's got fluid on three sides, but there were lots more that you would see in other images. So more than four papillations with minor vascularity and some shadowing. Again, easy descriptors don't apply. So how about uh, simple rules? Um, well, there are, there are um, there's some shadowing, so that's a benign feature, but there are also at least four papillations, so it's got some benign and some malignant features, so it's uncertain on simple rules. And we'll look at this mass again in a minute and see what it turned out to be. So how good are the simple rules? Well, if they're conclusive, that's to say if they are either benign or malignant, they're very good. But they're uncertain in nearly a quarter of cases, and that's when you need a second test. So which one to use? When the simple rules are inconclusive, you could treat them all as though they're malignant, because nearly half of them are. Or you could get the rescan done by an expert, by a sonologist. Or you could use ADNEX and be your own expert. So the IOTA group published the ADNEX model in 2014. Um, and again, this paper is fantastic. And they chose six ultrasound features to um, make up the algorithm. And these are the maximum diameter of the lesion in any plane, the maximum diameter of um, a solid material, whether or not there are more than 10 cyst locules, the number of papillations, if there's naught, one, two, three, or more than three, presence or absence of acoustic shadowing, and the presence or absence of ascites. Now also, they take into account some clinical features, the age, where this patient's being scanned, if it's in an oncology center or not, and a CA125, which is optional. So the ADNEX model, you can find it online if you go to this link, and you can then put the model either on your desktop or you can do it on your phone. So let's do some examples. This patient was 43. She presented with pain and unscheduled bleeding on the pill and her CA125 level was normal at 14.2. This was her scan. This is one of her ovaries. And so you can see that this is multilocular solid. It's multilocular with solid. There is low level echogenicity in the cyst, more than four papillations, some minor vascularity, and some quite marked shadowing. Always look for the shadowing, it's a useful artifact. So this is how you do the um, uh, ADNEX model. So I put this one on my desktop and then you just go to each uh, bit and you fill it in as you go along. So she was 43, um, I work in an oncology center. The maximum diameter of the lesion was 82 millimeters. The maximum diameter of the largest solid part, 32 millimeters. Uh, there were not more than 10 locules. There were more than three papillations. There was shadowing. There was not ascites. And the CA125 was 14.2. This is optional to, to enter that. You press calculate. You agree with the disclaimer. And then this is what it looks like. And I'll show you in the next slide how to use this information. So here you can see the, the ADNEX result. This is how it displays. These two, the chance of a benign tumor and chance of malignancy have to add up to 100, of course. So if we only look at the risk of malignancy, in this case, it's 27%. You next have to choose a cutoff for benign or malignant. And often this is at 10%, um, but it depends a bit on, on the kind of people that you're scanning. Some units use 25%, but let's use 10%. You then look within these which is the highest one. This risk of malignancy takes into account borderline, stage one, stage two to four, or metastatic, and these two add up to, uh, to this number here. So the, the tallest column here is borderline. So ADNEX says this is malignant and it is borderline. You need to then just compare it to the relative risk um, and it works out the relative risk for this patient. It's all done on, on all of their uh, previous cases. You can see that the highest risk of 2.8 is a borderline. So ADNEX says it's malignant and it's a borderline mass. 
and the histology was indeed a borderline serious tumour. Then what happened is the AOTA group worked with the American College of Radiology and they set up a system called Ovarian at Nexel Imaging Reporting Data System, or ORADS. Now, this is very new, it's only since 2020. It's a new international system, again, to determine the risk of malignancy of an adnexal mass. And this system, ORADS, combines diagnosis with management suggestions. And it combines pattern recognition with IOTA terminology. They call that the ORADS lexicon. Um, and it combines it with the ADNEX risk prediction model, uh, an algorithm. And it condenses all this information into six categories of risk, all based on nearly 6,000 IOTA patients uh, with an adnexal mass and histology. These are the papers that were published in 2020. Um, and if you look at the, the two parts of the ORADS chart, there's got a pattern recognition, what they call the lexicon, and an ADNEX score. So let's look at that. This is what the chart looks like. So it's, it's very attractive looking. So there are six categories of risk. Um, as you can see, the ORAD score is either 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, or 5. Um, it also looks at the uh, ADNEX percentage, the risk of malignancy calculated by ADNEX. These are the lexicon descriptors. What does the mass look like? And then there's some management suggestions at the end. So what you can do, you can either print the chart and hang it up. That's what we've done. It's by the computer where we do our reporting. Uh, or you can go online and get the app and you can put it on your phone. And here are some um, uh, QR codes so you can have a look and uh, download those for yourselves. So what are the different scores? So ORAD 0 is an incomplete evaluation, maybe due to bowel gas, the large size of a lesion, um, or if you were unable to do TV imaging and that gives you a score of 0, it means you have to do something else, either repeat the study by someone else or do something different. Um, 1 is a normal ovary, and this uh, includes things like a follicle, a corpus luteum, or in premenopausal women at less than 3 centimetres. The main thing is not to call these a cyst, um, because for a patient, a cyst is something abnormal, whereas it's just normal. So call it a normal ovary. Category two are the almost certainly benign lesions, and this is pattern recognition, and it relates to the iota easy descriptors of a simple cyst, a hemorrhagic cyst, a dermoid, and an endometrioma. But also they've included a paraovarian cyst, a peritoneal inclusion cyst, and a typical hydrosalpinx. You must remember this is for masses of less than 10 centimetres, exactly the same as previously in the IOTA system, because the resolution beyond 10 centimetres is not good enough to be conclusive. And you've got to be really careful. If you're going to diagnose a classic benign lesion in a postmenopausal woman, it is possible that a 75-year-old woman has a dermoid, but is it not a malignancy? You've got to be really, really careful. Low-risk malignancy, 1 to 10%. Intermediate risk if the ADNEX score is 10 to 50 percent. Um, and with these kind of masses, don't say complex. And I think we've, we've learned the IOTA terminology and you can say it and express it so much better than this. And then the high risk group is group five with the ADNEX score would be more than 50 percent. Um, and these are the typically malignant masses that definitely need to be seen by a gynae oncologist. So then suggested management is the final um, final column in the chart. And for ORADS 0, they suggest repeating the scan. ORADS 1, it's normal ovary, no follow-up. ORADS 2, these are uh, simple um, classic descriptors, so either no follow-up or some uh, ultrasound surveillance. Um, but if it's a postmenopausal woman, you need to be very careful, and I'll talk about that in the next slide. ORADS 3 should really be repeated by an ultrasound specialist, a sonologist, or have an MRI. And these um, people with these masses should be referred to a gynecologist. But if you have ORADS 4, the, the suggestion is that the scan is repeated by a sonologist, or if you don't have one of those, um, do an MRI. And then refer such cases to a gynecologist, who will then consult with a gyne oncologist in case this is a malignant mass. But ORADS 5, these people need to be referred directly to gynae oncology. The controversy just here is if it's a postmenopausal woman with a simple cyst, um, for ORADS, they, uh, if they're small, don't follow up at all, and less than 10 centimetres follow up in a year. 
but in the UK we've got the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynaecologists and they published in 2016 saying that if you have such a cyst and it's one to five centimetres repeat the scan in four months and if it's more than five centimetres refer to a gynaecologist. So let's do some examples of ORADS. So this patient is 49 and she had some pelvic pain. She'd had an ovarian cystectomy 10 years ago but couldn't remember which side and her CA125 was normal. Um, that's the videos in longitudinal plane of the mass but uh, when you go in transverse there turned out to be two populations with minor vascularity. So I described it in the IOTA language as a 90 millimeter unilocular solid mass or unilocular with solid. Uh, it had 40 millimeters maximum solid material, two papillations, minor vascularity and no ascites. So is there an easy descriptor for this? No, it doesn't fit any easy descriptors. So next we go to simple rules. Um, and you can see that there are no benign features and there are no malignant features. Um, it's not unilocular because it's unilocular solid. It's unilocular with a solid component. Um, so there are no benign, no malignant features. So it's uncertain on simple rules. So next we go to ADNEX. And when I did the ADNEX score, you could see that it, the risk of malignancy was nearly 58%. Um, and that the biggest contributor to that, you can see it's the highest of these four, um, was the borderline category at 28%. So ADNEX predicts it's malignant and most likely a borderline tumour. So what did ORADS think about it? Well, unilocular cyst with a solid component um, and the ADNEX score had been 58%. So ORADS thought it was of intermediate risk, but ADNEX said it was in fact a high risk lesion and she had a laparoscopic BSO. Um, and it was in fact a borderline mucinous tumour. So we can see here that it did not fit easy descriptors. It was uncertain on simple rules, so at that point it's 50-50 malignant. Um, in ADNEX, 58% risk score likely borderline, and ORADS an intermediate risk score. So these were all concordant. A few more examples. This patient was 41, and she complained of minor intermittent pelvic pain, and she hadn't had a CA125. And when we scanned this lady, you can see here a unilocular cyst with no solid component because the Rocky Tansky nodule is not a solid component. It's ectoderm with hair, fat and teeth. So there's mixed echogenicity that's hypoechoic, hyperechoic and everything in between. There was dense shadowing and no vascularity, 0.3 PRF, no colour. So is there an easy descriptor for this? Yes, it's a dermoid. Now, you can just stop. You know it's a dermoid. You don't need to do anything else at all. But if you were going to do that on simple rules, it's a unilocular cyst with shadowing, no blood flow. There are no malignant features. Uh, and so this is a benign mass on simple rules. When I did the ADNEX score, the risk of uh, malignancy was 0.4%. Um, and uh, <laughs> it, not, it doesn't fit anything at that point. So what did ORADS think about it? Well, it fell into a classic benign lesion. If you look at their paper, they're described in some detail, classic benign lesion, and uh, the ADNEX score was a risk of less than 1%. So again, um, this was thought to be benign. So looking at everything, easy descriptors dermoid, you could absolutely have stopped there. You knew what it was, it was benign dermoid, but on simple rules, it was benign and the ADNEX and ORADS concurred with that. This patient was 64 and she had suspicious symptoms, tired, couldn't eat, felt full, she was losing weight and had some bowel symptoms and her CA125 was normal at 27.5. She had a 152 millimetres irregular multilocular solid lesion, so she had more than one locule, so it's multilocular. There's also a solid component, um, so it's multilocular with solid. There was strong vascularity in areas. There was no shadowing and no ascites. So is there an easy descriptor for this? No. What does it look like on simple rules? Well, there were no benign features, but on malignant features, there's irregular multilocular solid with strong blood flow. So on simple rules, it's malignant. If we want to know a bit more on ADNEX, it came out with a score of 80.8% uh, and in that, the, these two are pretty much the same, so it's either going to be borderline or stage one. What does ORADS think about it? It's multilocular with a solid component, and because she had strong blood flow, that fits in here. So the ADNEX score was also high. 
so malignant and it was a malignancy a granulosa cell tumor so again it didn't fit easy descriptors it was malignant on simple rules and it was malignant on adnex and orads Another example of a 51-year-old woman who was still premenopausal, who came with bloating and a normal CA125. She had 164 millimetres multilocular solid or multilocular with solid. And the solid can be quite hard to see when you've got this many locules and you have to look very carefully for it. Um, but she definitely had a solid component. You can just see some there. More than 10 locules. The maximum solid component was only 13 millimetres, but there was three of those um, little bits of solid material jutting into the cyst wall. So three papillations, low, echo, low level echogenicity in the locules, no shadowing, minor vascularity and no ascites. So is there an easy descriptor for this? No, it doesn't fit any of them. Simple rules. There are no benign features. There's a malignant feature of irregular multilocular solid of more than 10 centimetres. So on simple rules, it's a malignant mass. On adnex, it also looked malignant. We had, uh, I put all the, the bits in there and then it came out at 69.5%. And if you look at what it's predicting, it's predicting that it's going to be borderline. What did ORADS think of it? Well, you can see just there, a multilocular cyst with solid component, any size with no or minor uh, color flow. Um, the, um, the ADNEC score was higher though, at 70%, so we, it's either going to be intermediate or high risk. Um, and this was a, a mucinous malignant um, ovarian cancer, which had started in a borderline tumor. So it didn't fit easy descriptors. It was malignant on simple rules. It was malignant on adnex, which predicted borderline, which it had started out as, and then um, ORADS was concordant with that. Another example, this patient was 68 and she came with bloating and loss of appetite and a very high CA125 level. In our labs, the upper cutoff for CA125 is 35. And in this patient, she had a 134 millimeters irregular solid mass. So it's irregular because um, it has an irregular outline and also the internal little um, cyst locules are, are um, irregularly shaped. Um, sorry, irregularly, you can see they're just irregular there. There's shadowing and then there was moderate vascularity, no ascites. So easy descriptors, uh, there was no ascites, so it didn't fit um, an easy descriptor, but it looks malignant, doesn't it? So on simple rules, um, there is shadowing, but it's irregular solid with strong blood flow. So it's got a benign and malignant feature, so it's uncertain on simple rules. Adnex, though, made it 99.1% certain to be uh, a malignancy, so way above the 10% cutoff, and was predicting a stage 2 to 4 tumour just there. What did ORADS think? Well, solid, irregular, any size, any colour is high risk. Um, and ADNEX um, said the same thing. So this was a stage three ovarian cancer. Um, easy descriptors were not applicable because there was no ascites. Simple rules was uncertain because there's shadowing. And then ADNEX and ORADS showed that this is a very high risk mass. Now, I chose this case because this um, ovarian cancer has shadowing. And in our hands, we see shadowing in at least half of our ovarian malignancies. So just because shadowing is a benign feature doesn't make the mass benign. It's a benign feature, not, um, not more than that. This patient was 35, was asymptomatic. She was a high risk patient, having had a right oophorectomy in the past and had a normal CA125. Um, when we scanned her, we could see that you had a bit of normal ovary and then just on the outside of it was this irregular solid mass with no shadowing, strong vascularity. You can see the vascularity there, um, no ascites. So it just um, the video clip shows nicely that you, we had a bit of normal ovary and then this lump of irregular solid material. There's the bit of normal ovary. So is there an easy descriptor for that? No. Simple rules, well there were no benign features, irregular solid is a malignant feature with strong blood flow, so it was malignant on simple rules. On ADNEX, uh, just looking at the solid component that came out with a risk of 32.3% and looking at these four, the biggest one was metastatic. So ADNEX thinks this is a metastatic tumour to the ovary. 
What did ORADs think? Well, solid, irregular, any size, any colour uh, goes into the high risk category. Uh, ADNEX thought it was a bit less, but was predicting malignant and metastatic. Um, and this was a clear cell renal cancer metastatic to the left ovary. So again, you can see that AZ descriptors uh, couldn't use it. It was malignant on simple rules, malignant on ADNEX and ORADs. Uh, another case, 35-year-old, she was actually pregnant and she um, presented with pelvic pain at 17 weeks of pregnancy with a raised CA125. But a CA125 can be raised in a normal pregnancy. This is what her left ovary looked like. This is just it, uh, on, on normal and this is with, uh, with colour flow. And looking transabdominally and transvaginally, we, we did both. You can see this is a little video clip of her irregular ovary. Whether you call it solid or multilocular solid, and there's the pregnancy. Um, you need to think about whether or not the solid component occupies at least three quarters of the mass. This is the right ovary, so both ovaries are very abnormal. Um, and there you can see that, that ovary again is a large solid component with a, a few locules. So when you've got bilateral abnormalities, you need to go to the worst side, and the worst side is clearly the left side. So it's an irregular solid lesion with more than 10 locules, strong vascularity, no shadowing, and no ascites. This is the side that we're going to do our algorithms on. So there's not a simple, uh, easy descriptor for this. On simple rules, it's irregular solid with strong flow, so it's malignant already. On ADNEX, 85% risk of malignancy and on ORADs again it goes into the high risk category and this was metastatic bowel cancer um, so you can see that uh, all, the, all the systems said it was malignant. So you can see that the IOTA risk models um, are, and ORADs are complementary to one another, they do slightly different things and I use both of them. The ADNEX model gives you the risk of malignancy and the possible stage and whether it's primary or metastatic. And ORADS is a system giving you a, a, a risk of malignancy and suggested management. Um, and because it works so well like this, I think I'm going to call it IOTARADS. How to use the systems? Well, when you take all your masses, half of them are instantly uh, recognisable using easy descriptors into the, the, the green benign ones and the red malignant ones. So that's half of them done. But if it doesn't work on easy descriptors, you could go to simple rules where you will have a conclusive answer for benign or malignant in three quarters of the cases. But in the quarter that you're left with, simple rules uncertain, you could then go to add next. Um, and that will give you a, a score and you can put that score into the chart and correlate it um, in the, with, uh, with the lexicon and come out with, uh, with the risk and see if it's the same. Alternatively, if it's not diagnosable on easy descriptors, you could go straight for ORADs. Um, and if it's a patient in a category four or five, um, what you do is you would refer to gynae oncology. They might ask for an MRI or a CT. They might ask for the opinion of a sonologist who would then do ADNEX. ADNEX is very, very good. And so you can see that all these masses that used to be called complex, we have to stop using this term because we can not only give it better description, but we can actually predict what these masses are. For more resources, I would highly recommend the iotagroup.org website, and here are some QR codes for you. On their website, you'll find papers and lectures and news on courses where you can become IOTA accredited, and that's a very good thing to be. Uh, and you can go to the acr.org and you can download the, uh, the ORADS uh, system for your phone or for your laptop. And again, there's some good QR codes. Thank you.